You know, this is the time of the year that's the best time of the year mm -hmm. yeah. for our players, for our coaches. Our passion is high. Our job as referees is to allow that passion up to the standards that we have, and then we have to adjudicate the game because it is important that we adjudicate the game the same this time of year as we did in November so that our players and our coaches have the proper tools to know what to expect at this time of the year. Right. And we can't then take on, you know, when Scotty and I came in, this view of <laughs> it's the last two minutes, let them play right. it's, it's this time of the year how can you make that call right. but that's really unfair to the length of our season because the games in November and December do have the same importance as games later in the year and if we don't send out the proper things to our teams and sit and say oh well we're just gonna not tell you but we're gonna change how we referee well, it okay, but we're so in real do trouble you guys, there. do you guys not change your officiating no, during the playoffs now the play changes during the playoffs the, Scotty can speak to this, I think, greatly. You know, over 82 games, there are ebbs and flows to a season. Obviously, you're on a 10-day road trip. That 10th day on the West Coast is, is hard to bring the same energy as the first game on, on a homestand. So there's ebbs and flows to how the play is. In the playoffs, you get seven games, potentially. You're tired of seeing one another after that fourth, fifth, sixth games. And so the intensity most certainly rises. Our job is to uphold the standards, though. The competition committee this year made it really clear to us that they want the playoffs called the same they want November called the same and they want the 48th minute called the same mm. hmm. and we haven't been a hundred percent successful that this year right. but we've you know some uh, raps some points of education raps have been called with two and three seconds to go mm -hmm. and I think it's important that we do our work so that if you because if you set a player in the first quarter who has a high impact to a team because you called that rap that mm -hmm. points of education and now you don't want to call it at the two second Mark, you really have decided to impact the game in one way right. and then made a capricious decision that's not up to our standards later. We're, we're getting away from that. We have gotten away from that. And we are going to uphold the standards on a nightly basis. Because it was different when you played. Yeah. They officiated the playoffs very differently than the regular season. Yeah, I mean, I just listened to your yeah. point. I mean, from a player's standpoint, we feel like that they, they do call sure. the game different, but I know in the playoffs, I play harder. Uh, I got more energy <laughs> than I do in the 82 game right. season. So there's a lot of uh, truth to, to what you're, yeah. you're saying. But I wanted to ask you, uh, a lot of missed calls over the last few years in my eye. Sure. Uh, I felt like in my era, um, you, you guys missed calls, but it wasn't that many calls. And you told me in the back, like everything is magnified. Yeah. Now. But do you think it's time for a fourth official? I think that that's an excellent point. We tried it in the G League as an experiment for a month uh, last season. The accuracy rates were about similar to th three person. I think that our job at the NBA is to, to explore innovation. Most well, certainly a fourth person would be innovative. Um, more isn't out of hand as a default better. You have the key to good officiating is a mechanic system. Right. And we'd have to create a mechanic system that that adds a benefit to that fourth official as opposed to just oh four means better and I think the analogy might be everyone's shooting three pointers let's just add two more one more per team and go six on six because we need more shooting we know spacing is a big part of playing spacing is a big part of covering the floor properly and if we can create and that's our job to explore the ability to create a mechanic system that added to the game then we want to do that if it detracts from the game because it lessens our experienced officials from getting into the right spots, then we have to, to monitor that as well. Bonnie, I got a question for you because, sure. you know, in your role, you also help develop younger referees yeah. and bring them along. You are one of the great personality guys as a ref, <laughs> right? Guys, they may not always agree with your that. call, but they felt like they respected you, you respected them. And a lot of players nowadays feel like that's not quite the case with all the refs. Is that something you can teach younger referees how to have a relationship with players? I hope so because we're trying to. Uh, one of the, I think that, you know, Scotty and I are here today. 25 years ago in 1993, he didn't want to see me on a game. Right? No, he didn't want to see me on a game. I was learning my craft and he was in his prime. And, and so we do have this, this growth of the league, if you will. And that growth Look of the league. Look at you league, there. Uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, much different. <laughs> have hair and everything else. But the growth of our league has brought a scrutiny to our league that our young people are not only living under uh, as officials. We hired six this year. Right. But not only are they learning 
learning the craft, but they're doing it in under scrutinized ways that I didn't when I was young. And they're also having to concurrently learn about how to interact with people. Right. What we want them to know, though, is, is that you are going to be with people for 30 years. Right. People, you're, the players that are, are it, with Brandon Adair and Natalie Sago and Ashley Moyer Gleesh in their first year are going to be assistant general managers, assistant coaches, coaches, general managers, presidents of teams, and building good relationships so that you can trust each other. Listen, NBA referees miss calls. I think we're excellent at our work, but within those missed calls, what we're hoping is, is that you can trust, even if we disagree about this call specifically, I still trust you, Monty, to get to good fairness, to get to integrity, mm -hmm. to get to your work. And I will say, some of the players like when you guys miss a call if they're missing a call your way. Bradley Beal <laughs> appeared, do you remember this, right? Oh, the, the egregious travel against the Pistons about a month ago. And the official NBA referee's Twitter account, which is not you guys, it's sure. the Referees Association, they stood by the non-travel call. <laughs> you disagree with that. I did. Uh, Bradley Beal got a great nickname out of this because he's now done it twice that didn't get called. And twice. so he has become, yeah, with a later game about two yeah. weeks later. And he is now calling himself, or people are calling him the walking bucket. <laughs> yes, you get it? Um, but you, you, that's a trap, right? It's a trap. That's a trap. I, I think there are instances in which we can fumble the ball. Um, we fumble the ball at the big at the end of our dribble when we're trying to pick it up. Right. If you fumble it there, you're allowed to go get it. If I go to shoot the basketball and it slips out of my hand, I'm allowed to go get that fumble. Those are all legal ways. Right. I think not. that <laughs> after we've taken our two steps and we see that our shot may be about to be blocked uh, and we fumble it or lose it, uh, it's not the interpretation not, not the that, that we want to, right. to go with.